So we're going to just talk generally about two types of transactions in private companies, redemptions and cross purchases, and just how they affect the company's financials, okay? And we'll do this. We'll probably take a break after this. So just terms of art here. A redemption means that the parties to the transaction are the shareholder and the company. <coughs> so if there's some kind of a transaction, <coughs> bless you, uh, some kind of a transaction that goes on, um, the company and the, uh, and the shareholder are the parties. So the company is exchanging money or a loan or something with a shareholder and the shares are going back to the company into its treasury. That's one structure. And another structure that you'd see often is what's called a cross purchase. So cross purchase just means the shares change hand between shareholders. The company's not involved as a direct party to that transaction. And there's nuances to each which we're going to talk about. But generally speaking, before we get into a lot of fancy structuring and whether it's a seller note or bank debt or whatever, this is generally the, the way that shares are, are transacted inside of a company. So this is what a redemption looks like. So here's our company. There's some kind of a funding source for the transaction. It could be working capital. Maybe they got bank debt. Or maybe there's a seller note involved. So what happens is the company purchases the shares. Let's assume that there's two shareholders in this. So shareholder A is the, is the um, departing shareholder, senior generation person, and shareholder B is the next generation, G2, second generation. So the way that the shares get transacted is that the company exchanges consideration and the shares go back to the company in exchange for the considerations. The company buys them back. So the parties to the transaction are here. So what happens is, if they, let's just say that this, this example, that shareholder A had 50 shares and shareholder B had 50 shares for the sake of argument. When the company redeems those 50 shares and puts them in its treasury, by de facto, shareholder B becomes 100% owner because that's all that's outstanding after they redeem. Everybody with me on the mechanics of that? So when they start their 50-50, these all get retired, basically put into treasury. De facto, shareholder B becomes 100% owner because those are the only shares outstanding. So, that, so that, the transfer of ownership from 50-50 to 100% happens indirectly. You with me? But it happens. It's a redemption. Any questions on this? Yes. Yep, and it can come like, you know, as I said, bank debt, seller note more often, but there could be resources in there. And if it's a data, because of a death, there could be some insurance proceeds that come to the company to fund that, okay? Here's a cross purchase. The first step in a cross purchase to make it work, and I'm assuming that it's an S corp. Is there anybody in here that's a C corporation? Okay, so there's one C. So these don't always work the same in a C-Corp. 99% of our clients are S's, so that's what this assumes. What happens first is um, the shareholders exchange, let's use an example of a note. Okay, they exchange note or cash. So shareholder um, two, actually I have these, yeah, I have them in the right direction. Shareholder one exchanges shares in exchange for some consideration with shareholder two. And let's just say no money changes hands. Shareholder two um, gives shareholder one a note for $4 million as an example. So that's the value they've agreed upon their transfer. So first step is um, Frank and I are partners. We're 50% partners and my half's worth $4 million. Frank gives me a note for $4 million and I give him my shares. Now, after that happens, at the company level, who owns the, who's the 100% shareholder? Frank. Frank is, right? So step one in, a, in this kind of a transaction is we have to exchange something first to move the shares. And let's assume that there's some debt involved, no cash up front. I give him my shares. He gives me a note that says, I'm going to pay you $4 million over 10 years, Mario. So those are the assumptions. So what happens is now Frank is the 100% owner of the company. I have exchanged my $4 million ownership stake for a $4 million note that he owes me personally. Everybody with me to that step. So what happens next is, 
because Frank now is the owner of the of 100% of the shares, he's entitled to the distributions from the company in 100%. So, in the last illustration, the company was sending the money directly to the shareholder in the redemption. In this case, what's happening is the company's still the source of these payments of the four million dollars. You with me? Except that he's now the 100% shareholder, so the cash comes out of the company to shareholder B, and then that money comes across to me. So it's two steps instead of one, but the company is still the source of the money. Everybody with me? Two steps instead of one. There's some nuances as to what that means, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Two basic structures. I'm going to go through some what that looks like in, in the way it's recorded because there's some advantages and disadvantages to each. 